Hi everyone, Veronica here. How's everyone doing? Hey Sandy, how are you? So I am assuming that you all can hear me. Thank you guys for being on time. I appreciate you all very much. Veronica Berrigan here, getting ready to start our live webinar tonight, which will be creating a successful comparative market analysis. So if you, this is the first time you joined us on this live webinar setting. Uh, just understand that the chat is enabled on the side, so you can type in here. Hello. I am so happy to be here. So <laughs> you can type your questions on the side, and I will answer them as we go. Um, if for some reason I miss them or anything, I'll definitely get to them right at the end as I'm going back and forth on the screens. You can also grab my attention uh, by texting me if for some reason I'm missing something. Uh, so let's get started. And hopefully you guys can all hear me and it's, it's not just Sandy that can hear me. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's webinar. So let's go ahead and get started. We talk so much about lead generation and all the amazing things um, to actually get ourselves in front of a listing uh, presentation, right? So it's key that one of the things that we master and we absolutely must master is really understanding how to price a home. There's nothing worse than not than having an overpriced listing. Also, there's nothing worse than uh, you setting expectations with your sellers that are unrealistic. And it really is a craft, guys. This comparative market analysis. There is not one way. Um, uh, no, the presentation is not on yet, uh, Sandy. It's just my screen. So hopefully, uh, let me know if you can see the MLS. Right here, can you guys see the MLS now? Can you see the screen of the MLS? Hopefully you can see it. So did you guys see me navigate back and forth between the screens? Were you able to see that? So let me know, type right there on the chat if you can see this MLS listing right here. So just say, yes, I can see it, or Veronica, you're crazy, I don't see the MLS listing. <laughs> 5160 West Quell Trick Drive, somebody help me out here. Can you guys see it and can you hear me before we move forward? Can you see me navigating through the screens like this? And can you see 5160 West Quell Track Drive? Please type in in the chat if you can see that right now. Okay, let's go back real quick. Um, wowzers, okay. Interesting. So let's see what I can do here. Uh, can you all hear me? That is very interesting. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, how about okay? How about now? Let's. I'm gonna go back to the MLS. -E. Oh, interesting. So try now. Oh, you can hear me fine. Thanks, Myron. Okay, now tell me if you can see this MLS sheet here. Fifty one sixty West Quail Track Drive. So just chat with me on the side and let me know if you can see this MLS listing right now. The MLS listing that I just navigated away from right now. So here's the MLS listing again. I'm, I'm showing you an MLS plano that has 5160 West Quail Track Drive. Can you all see it? If you could please chat on the side if you can see it. Not on YouTube, but on your screen right now. This, this Quail Track Drive. Okay. Perfect. All right. Interesting. Huh, interesting. Okay. So it looks like it may be working now. So hopefully, um, if I'm going to be navigating back and forth in, on screens, so if for some re only on YouTube, interesting. 
Well, if for some reason you cannot see as I navigate through the screens, I'm going to be going back and forth. Just send me a, a text as well because I may not be able to see your chat right here. But type in the chat if you can't see my screen. I'm going to be going on through the presentation now. You should be seeing a weird screen right now. It's like all these different, um, it's like it has depth in it. So it's not the actual PowerPoint. I don't have a PowerPoint for this class. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going moving forward. Um, if for some reason you cannot see the MLS where I'm going to be navigating to right now, or you cannot hear me, just shoot me a quick text so I can see it as well. Okay, so let's get started on pricing at home. So you have a call from the seller. Uh, you finally uh, were lead generating and you get a, uh, the opportunity to do a, an actual presentation. So the number one thing that they're probably gonna be focusing on is what is my home worth, right? So it is a craft, guys. Not all homes are gonna be the same. And quite honestly, the higher the purchase price, the more difficult they get because there's less comparables, uh, there's less less things that we can actually look at. Um, you, know, you know, the more expensive they are, they usually also more upgrades. And perhaps you're also dealing with uh, bigger land. So all of those things take into you have to take into consideration when pricing a home. One thing that I do want to warn you is we are not appraisers. We do not appraise properties. So you can't necessarily deduct exact values. There's no guidelines out there. There's no book. Even appraisers don't have a book that say, for, for a pool, give them X amount, and for you know, granite, give them X amount. So these are all kind of stipulations we have to look at. In the end, really, if you're going to do a good comparative market analysis, it's about looking at every moving part. You know, not only the comps, but also the actual property, um, what has closed, of course, and also what what is their competition and upgrades and looking at lot size, we have to look at every single thing to be able to come up with the price. And then when you go deliver, you don't necessarily tell the seller it's gonna be $304,500. You really are there to give them a range. And that's what I'm gonna teach you guys today. So first things first is the, before I do anything, um, the seller wants to know how much their house is worth, right? So you already have a property address. So before I do anything, I do research on the actual property so that I have it in front of me as I'm doing my information. So we're gonna take this house up here as, a, as our experiment. 5160 West Quail Track Drive, right here, okay? So what I would do first is I would go into the MLS and it yours will look something like this. You may have a different look here. But in the end, what I'm gonna do is click on the address right here. So it's under search and then address. And what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the history of the property. Plus, I want to see if there's any pictures to see what if, a lot of the times you get to go do a CMA and you haven't even seen the house yourself. So this is going to give us a good idea. So 5160 West Quail Trick Drive. So I'm going to go in here and plug it in. Quail Truck. And you just need to put the two words in here and you can leave everything else blank. It will find it that easily. So now we're hitting next. Now what's pulling up is if it's ever, ever been listed before, any type of history. Uh, for us, it's telling us right now that it looks like this is the first time it was actually listed. So what we're going to do now is we are going to look at the condition of the property. So let's look at some photos. If it's never been listed before, you have a harder uh, uh, time because you'll have to take whatever the seller tells you uh, as far as upgrades, if you haven't seen it yet, right? Um, but if you, again, if you do the research, even if it has been listed, closed, canceled, expired or anything like that, it would have given us a list of the times it was expired. And again, we can look at the pictures from there. So let's say this one was a press listing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start getting a, a really good feel of the property and some upgrades. Well, first of all, we know it's a four bedroom, two and a half bath. It's six. Uh, wow. Um, has additional bedrooms as well. 2,743 square feet. Stetson Valley is where it's located. Um, and then I look at the photos to see what kind of upgrades it actually has. So I'm just kind of looking. Tile, carpet, doesn't have granite, nice cabinets. I mean, it's not excessively upgraded like with insane upgrades, but it doesn't show as basic either. It has a few upgrades here and there. So more than anything, I'm just getting an idea of the property. Once I have found it, I will click on this little box right here, which will then open it up for me in another window. Why do I want that? Because I want to be able to go back and reference the property as I am doing my comparative market analysis. So I want to keep that completely open. If for some reason yours did not come up and you don't really have history on it, then remember we can always go to Monsoon, which is in Texas, 
monsoon. And we can plug it in there as well so that we can get additional information about it. Look it up here. And I probably didn't type it in right. 5160 West Quail Track. Well, what is it doing? 5160 West Quail. 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 Quail Track. Okay. So I should pull it up. So now this is giving me all the tax information for the actual property. It's telling me who the owner is, the, lo the subdivision. Um, it's giving me also information on square footage, which is down here, 2743 square foot, who built it. Um, I need to know all of this uh, information, even lot size, 6152 square feet. An average lot size in Arizona is about 7,000 square feet. So everything, everything seems a little bit standard, nothing too crazy. It even gives us information about the seller's um, loan and how many people have owned it. So this is original owners that are now trying to sell it is really what this is telling me. So now I'm going to go back and say, okay, I've pulled up my information. I have it on the side right here so I can reference and go back. Now I'm going to do my comparative market analysis report. So what I would do here, and this is a good one, guys, because it just got reduced the price. So let's see why the reduction and let's see what's happening. Um, we will do a full search. That's where I always start. So you click on full search. Now, for a comparative market analysis, you need to include active. You need to include um, contract contingent on buy or sell. This is very common right now. Many um, transactions have an accepted offer. However, there's a contingency where the buyer has to sell their current home as well. And you would list it under this part. UCB under contract taking backups. Now, you can use this for several reasons. Perhaps the buyer seems a little shaky or perhaps something's, um, there's a bigger contingency that you don't know if it's actually going to go through. So you may put it under that. Most of the time, though, you're going to put it under pending once you accept a, an accepted contract. And then for comparative market analysis, guys, we need to know closed transactions as well. So I'm going to click on active, CCBS, UCB, pending, and closed. We do not look at expired or temporarily off the market or canceled. Um, I would only use those three if it's a listing that I cannot find any comparables for, but we really, just for activity purposes, not to actually use the data in there. Because if it went expired or canceled, and to me that's just a real estate reject, you know, there's there's obviously was overpriced or something was wrong for it not to um, actually sell. So I'm going to hit those four. I'm going to click on residential right here because we're looking at sales, and then I'm going to click next. Now here's where a lot of the... You can plug in information, but there's also analytics or, or things that since you know the property, you can plug in here as well. The number one thing is we do know what the subdivision is, thankfully. Stetson Valley Parcel 23. Now on here under the subdivision, you can just put Stetson Valley. Stetson Valley. Now, this is a hit and miss, guys, because if the agent didn't spell it out correctly or something happened in the MLS, then I may not necessarily pull all of them. However, it does look like it's pulling a lot right now because it is pulling all the closed ones for the history of the MLS. On the legal subdivision, that's what you would copy exactly from what the tax information is saying, which is what they have on the MLS on the side. Sesame Valley, parcel 23. That's the legal to subdivision name. But if you're familiar, you understand that you know this, this area is actually called Stetson Valley. So I would start my search there. If you didn't know the subdivision or if it was a subdivision that was very small and you knew that you were not going to have comparables, then you can use other criteria for as far as location. You can click on location, tax and legal, and you can do several things. You can do zip code, you can do city, um, you can do hundred block, which you know you find that up here in the uh, in, in the area. Also, map code grid right here. This one works amazing. J thirty two. It will only pull um, properties in that actual map code grid. So this is only if you're not pulling a lot of comparables with the subdivision. For our purposes today, it does appear that we have a, um, a good amount of, of actual properties in Stetson Valley under this subdivision. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the property and I'm going to say it's a two-story. Um, it is 2,743 square feet. The first thing I'm going to tackle is the square footage. It's 2,743 square feet. So my mentality is let me go 200 square feet under and let me go 200 square feet over. 
2743 would put us at about 2543. I'm just going to go to 25. And then 2743 would take us 2943. So I'll just go to 3000. I start looking at the numbers up here to see how many properties it's giving me. If I'm not getting a lot, I start spreading out the approximate square footage, but we're getting a ton. We're getting 225. One of the things that's going to eliminate a lot of the, this big number is your closings. So I'm going to click on dates up here, and I'm going to click this little button that says close of escrow date. When you do that, what it's going to do is it's only going to pull up properties that have closed between uh, August 10th, I'm sorry, uh, February 10th, 2016 until today, or the, it actually gives you a future date. It, it is strategic to keep these dates in mind, just uh, six months back is, is good enough. But if I was getting up here, guys, only like three properties or five, then I would go back here and I would change this date and go back a year. So that's, that's a strategy you're going to use if it's a property that's hard to comp out. But I'm good because I have 22 properties up here that are already within the square foot range in the subdivision. And... Um, and that have closed in the last six months. So I'm, I have enough because typically what you want to do in a comparative market analysis is try to get three actives, three pending properties already with offers and three closed. The ones you're going to focus on the most primarily is going to be closed so that you don't run into appraisal issues. And then the second ones you're going to focus on are the active because that's your live competition. And then lastly, pendings, because we really analyze how long it took properties to go pending based on what their our sales price is. So now I can go back here to my main. Because I got 22 properties, I really am not going to put anything else in here. I mean, you could get down to if it had a pool, you could say private pool. If it had a super large lot, like if it was on an acre or something, you can put the approximate lot range. I mean, you can put the year built. Again, this is only get as fine-tuned as possible, but only when you have too many properties to pick from. And if you don't have a lot of properties to pick them, like 22, it's easy to just go through the list and see what your comparables are going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and just look at and browse through my comparable. So now it's telling me I've got 22. So I'm going to click on View Results, which is right here. And I'm going to start browsing through all of them. So let me just refresh my mind. I had a four bedroom, two and a half bath, a 2743 square feet. It does not have a pool and it is a two story. Okay, so number one thing I'm gonna tell you guys is that you do not compare two stories with single story homes. Single story homes will always be priced higher than a two story home because it costs more money to build out than to build up. So if this was a one story home, I would focus only on single story homes Unless I didn't have comparables, then I could go back and look at that as well, at two stories. Um, but it is not a strategy, guys, to look at the price per square footage, which is right here, 119, multiply it times the, time, the square footage amount, and now you have a list price. If that is not strategic. That is incorrect. We've got to take a lot of different things into consideration before we even touch price per square foot. So let's go back over here. Let me just go make sure you, make, you guys don't have any questions. Okay, cool. Let's go back over here and look at our comparable. So let's look at this one. Now we have uh, four bedrooms, two and a half bath. All right, this one is three bedrooms, two and a half bath, 2,613 square feet. Um, it doesn't have a pool. Let's look at the, con at the condition. It is smaller, so it's not the same floor plan. And now that I'm looking at the condition, very similar upgrades. Okay, so that's one. But again, we are 2743 square feet. So let's try to find one that perhaps is a little bit closer to ours. Here's another one. It looks like this is a 2613 square feet, the same as before. It is a three bedroom, two and a half bath. You know, one less bedroom is major as far as pricing goes. So I'm going to skip it and just kind of see what else is available for me. Then we go to the next one, which is our subject property. 329, it's bigger than the other two. And so it doesn't have a pool either. So right now, just by even looking at this, I feel like this price, this list, I'm sorry, this home is priced strategically. This home is gonna get a lot more views because it's so close in, in pricing and yet it's bigger than the other two. Not a lot more upgrades, but it is bigger. So if I was a buyer and my price point was 330 and under, 
you better believe I'm going to look at this one first before I look at these two. So these two are actually more on the overpriced status. It was originally priced, this house, guys, uh, for $335. After 15 days on the market, it went down to $329. This to me tells me that this agent is doing a really good job about setting standards and expectations. Perhaps they really pushed for a lower uh, list price, but maybe the seller pushed um, for higher. And you say at that point, no, I don't want to take the listing. No, you say, okay, I'll take the listing, but you better understand that if in two weeks we don't have an offer or we don't have X amount of traffic, then we're going to sit down and look at a price reduction. And that way you've already set the expectations. So I'm going to click on this because I'm going to use it as part of my comparables, obviously, because it's one of them. So we're going to start clicking the ones that actually apply. Now let's look at the next one. Five bedrooms, three baths. It's actually smaller as well, and it's more expensive. It does not have a pool. And this one, it's been on the market for 20 days, and it has not been reduced. Interesting. So it's actually uh, bigger. So let me keep going before I click on that one. The next one we're going to see is a single story, so I can't use that. Uh, it doesn't even compare. Uh, different square footage. Like I said, look at this big difference. Stetson Valley, 444,000. Yikes. 25, 12 square feet. It did have a pool, single story. And I bet you anything, if we look at this, it's going to have insane upgrades. Yep. I uh, knew it. That's the only way you can substantiate 444,000. That's a huge leap. And if you're familiar with Stetson Valley, this is actually part of the bigger part of the only bigger homes exist in this. Uh, part of uh, Stetson Valley, where up here we're in the uh, mid price point. So it does help a lot when you know the neighborhood. If you don't know the neighborhood, then this is where the research comes in and actually driving the property. As I'm going, as I keep going, I'm only seeing other single stories that are bigger, so I'm not going to use those. What I can see now is the UCBs. Now let's look at this one because this one's going to be very interesting. 2562 square feet at 326, it went con uh, pen. Uh, I'm sorry, it did get an offer, but it's still uh, under contract accepting backups. Now, when I look at properties that went pending or that are uh, UCB, the number one thing I look at is down here. 58 days on the market, 326,000. This to me, I'm pretty sure they didn't get like a full, full price. Maybe they got like close to full price offer because right now average days on market. And I know this just um, from Cromford report and from um, when you come to my sales meeting, this is all I talk about. You know, um, it's about 74 days average on the market for anything like between 350 and 400. So 58 days, that's healthy. That's normal. So they probably got something pretty close to that amount. I'm going to click on that one because to me, at least that means that there's activity around this price point in a smaller home. So I'm going to keep going. The 423, it is way too, um, it's a single story. I can't even compare it. It's bigger. And then the next one is 2598 square feet, and it is a single story as well. So totally different type of home. It's actually even a different builder. I cannot use that as a comparable. So I've gone through all of my active pendings, and I'm pretty much, uh, I haven't gone to close, so I'm going to leave that last. But right now, I already know I need more comparables. So I'm going to be forced to use uh, Ben Tree Drive, which is right in the neighborhood. It is smaller. It doesn't have a pool. But that's going to be my competition. Next one I'm going to be forced to use is this 2613 one, which is the same as the other one, 325 square feet. And I can tell a story with this one, 27 days on the market. I can use that one. So I've selected four already. That's pretty healthy. That's three active and one um, UCB, I really don't have other pendings to look at. Now, the most important thing we look at is closed. So let's look at some closed ones. This one's bigger. However, it was built later. This is 2008. This is 2012. So this is a newer version of Stetson Valley. At 295, I'm going to look at how many days on the market. 122 days. That's a long time, guys. But it looks like it started at 329 conventional buyer and it ended up selling for 295 yikes let's see let's look at the upgrades now we don't have a lot of upgrades either but i'll be scared if this one has a lot see it was a pretty um pretty plain it does have granite countertops but i don't know that i necessarily am going to use that this is going to be one of my last resorts just because it, the year was built 
um, and uh, adjust the condition of the property. So I, let's keep going and see if we can find others. 308,000, 2562 square feet, no pool. Oh, another thing, guys, on Molly Lane, let's go back and see when it actually closed. Because if it closed recently, I may use this comp. This one actually closed um, April 16th. So let's keep going and see if we can find something a little bit closer. Okay, next one. Five bedrooms, three baths. It's actually smaller. So I'm going to look down here. 75 days on the market. Eh, you know, pretty healthy. From 314th, it, uh, it sold at 308. Conventional loan. Um, and it looks like the seller paid 2.5% for a closing cost. So I really want to get into this information right here. Close of escrow date is May 3rd. It's not that long ago. So I'm, I'm going to use this comparable. It's low, it's smaller, but it'll give me a good story to tell. Next one we're going to go to. So as you can see, I really, the way I'm talking to you all, this is how the talking that I do to my head when I'm preparing these comparative market analysis. I'm just kind of really comparing back and forth. Here's another one. Three bedrooms, three bath. Um, this is a Lennar. So you can start looking at the, I'm not, I don't live in Stetson Valley. I'm not, I've never marketed there, but I already can tell when it's a different builder. So it's going to be a whole different floor plan. So this is a, a 2780 square foot versus ours, 2743. Very close, guys. Very, very close. 314,000. 333 days on the market. Oh, wow. So it went from 345, sold at 314, and it just sold on 523. It was an owner agent. And it looks like it had, from 345, it sold at 314. Um, let's look at some of the upgrades, because it must be upgraded for him to list that high. I mean, it's it's standard. It's, you know, tile in the traffic areas. The carpet looks standard. Nothing too amazing. For that many days in the market, that's really scary. So... I would use it, but just so that you can understand, um, tell that story to your to your client. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, just in case I don't get too many others. I'm on, uh, actually, I'm on file only 11, and there's 22 properties to look at. So let's keep going. Here's another one just like it. Oops, I think I clicked on the wrong one, guys. Sorry. So we're not gonna use. We're not gonna use this one. Okay. So let's go to the next one. 28, 10 square feet, bigger, no pool, 314, 167 days. Yikes. And they were paying 3.5 3 cold broke. From 325 to 314, to me, this really symbolizes an overpriced listing, quite honestly, guys. Let's hope that there's better closings. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be in trouble here. And it just closed, too. Um, then we have another one, 2562 square feet, uh, 319. 56 days on the market, definitely a lot healthier. And when VA, they wanted 319 and they got 319. It was an owner agent. It looks like he double ended it. And he didn't pay a lot of commission, two and a half percent. So let's look at the photos and then we can compare it. Uh, upgrades, clean, carpet, um, tile, granite, but nothing too, too major. I don't know, I may or may not use this one. Let's click on it and see. Let's keep going. Just look at the other ones. I'm really hoping to actually find something that's exactly like the one we're doing. 2819 square feet. It is much bigger. Four bedrooms, three baths. Let me make sure that this is not a single story. Oh, this one's much more upgraded. Tile backsplash, granite, clean. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at this one. 69 days on the market at 339. So they did get um, full price, but it took 69 days on the market. That's pretty accurate, guys. For this price point, again, it's about 74 days. So if you have it priced right, once it goes to the cycle, this is really what you should be getting. So I feel like this one is a little bit closer, yet it's not exactly like that one. And if I'm already thinking that I'm going to tell my seller that he really shouldn't be pricing over 339, I may not use that one. So let's go to the next one. And also, um, really, the comparable conditions and upgrades, it doesn't really compare to the first one, to what we're doing, which is this one. Remember, this one doesn't have a ton of upgrades. It's kind of more um, standard. Now, this one has a pool, so I'm not even going to use it. It's 374, and I bet you anything, it sold faster. Five days on the market. 
these types of homes guys are family homes so that helps you a lot if you understand who's going to be buying this property so of course a family home they're looking for pools they're looking for moving ready and they're looking for a lot of bedrooms and this is exactly what this property offered 374 uh and only five days on the market and i'm sure it had a ton of upgrades so they got away with it not only by selling it but also with the appraisal so yeah pretty clean and a huge law guys so yeah i'm not going to use this one at all so right now I have selected eight properties total. Let me keep going down, but I'm pretty sure all these other ones are going to be more custom. Yep, they're all single stories or with the pool. So, you know, considering that I only have eight, I'm going to go ahead and throw this one in here as well. I'm just going to have to tell a story around it. This is much more upgraded. It's bigger than that property. And at 339, it's sold in 69 days, which to me means I'm going to have a conversation with the seller Tell them we cannot be higher than 339. There's no way. There's no proof that yours being smaller with less upgrades is going to sell for that, which means we're going to have a problem with our appraisal. So just even looking at this, I can tell you right now that at 329, they're getting a lot closer. I still think at 329, it's probably going to sit on the market um, at least uh, 45 to 50 days. If they really want to get this thing sold in the next 20 days, then they're going to have to be under in between these two or under under this one to really get sell it fast and, and create maybe a multiple offer situation. So what I would do at this point is really um, start telling a story in my head. Now let's create the actual report so you can look at it, how it actually looks, what the seller looks like, and how you can actually present it. Before I do that, before I go into the report, are there any questions right now that you have on why I chose the comparables I chose, uh, why I didn't choose others? Any questions at all? Right now, this is your chance. And you should be seeing my weird screen right now. All right, I don't think we have any questions. So let's keep going. So the next thing's next. Now we're gonna prepare a report that we can either print or email to our clients. Don't do, um, don't email compared to market analysis unless it's like a family member and you know 100% you're gonna get the listing. Um, you wanna present these in front of, of them and explain to them the story because there's, there's a lot to tell them and you can't do that on an email, guys. Plus, you want to be able to have the opportunity to sit in front of them and then also show them your value and how you're going to get this home sold. So now that I've chosen the homes that I want to use on my comparative market analysis, then I'm going to click on this button up here. And then it says use all results or just select it. I'm just going to do select it. If you were working with a buyer, this is also a neat feature because some buyers will say, well, I don't know how what to submit on the uh, for the for the house, right, for the software. So you can actually just click on statistical buyer CMA. It just gives you a quick report on all the ones you chose. And now you can see, help your client decide what to submit for their offer, especially if it's something that doesn't have any offers and, you know, you can actually uh, negotiate. For our purposes today, we're representing the seller. So I'm going to click on CMA and I'm going to hit use selected. From here, it's pretty automated. So you, um, it's not until you get to the actual report where you really need to learn how to uh, tell the story. So I'm going to do a full CMA, quick CMA. If it's like I said, somebody already landed the listing appointment for a buyer or statisticals, those are great for uh, buyers as well. So I'm going to click on full CMA and then I'm going to go to next step. The next screen is going to tell you who's this for, and it will show up in your email. So you don't want to say a uh, horrible overpriced seller because they will read that. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and call this Joe Smith or Joe Smith and Jane Smith. All right. You can make some comments here, but it will give you additional um, uh, an additional opportunity to actually write a really nice email. So this will show up on your cover letter if you want to write something on here. So you click next step. And then you plug in the address right here. Now, the cool thing about this is that if you did your research and you saw that it was actually listed before, all I got to do now is actually say auto populate fields from existing field listing. I'm sorry. And then you just grab the listing number right here, copy and paste that bad boy, plug it in here, and hit submit. 
Now what it does is it actually takes the photos from whenever it's been listed before based on that MLS number. If it's never been listed before, don't worry, just put in your complete address right here, city, state, and it does need to, the zip. So um, once you put that in there, it just populates it from a map and then it won't have a pretty picture like this, but that's okay. You can just move forward and, and move forward with the report. Next thing is you're gonna hit next step. It's gonna tell you which one of the, which of the comparables uh, that you chose that are gonna be part of the report. At this point, um, you can add more comparables if you like, or you can delete them, you can do anything you want, but by this time you've already decided which ones you're gonna use and you're just gonna hit next. Seriously guys, the, this part of the, of the uh, report is just next, next, next. What it's doing here, and you are not an appraiser, is it allows you the opportunity to adjust plus or minus for each of the listings. So let's say, you know, this one had a pool uh, in your head and verbally you can tell the client, you know, pools are between 12 to 15,000 in value, but I'm not an appraiser. You do not want to come in here and plug in plus and negatives. Then now you're acting like you're an appraiser that you have a license for that and we don't have a license for that. And even like I said, even if you talk to an appraiser, there's not even no guidelines out there that say a pool is exactly $22,000 or Granite is this, so you do not want to touch this at all. You're just going to keep going and hit next step. It's going to take you to a list of all of the properties and how it's going to put them in your report. You're just going to hit next. Now here you do have the opportunity to plug in your own information. What it does is it gives you the low of the ones that you chose and the high of the ones that you chose. And then it gives you a recommended price. Now, if you're not gonna, let's say that you were gonna tell your client, you know what, let's try 329 and, and test the market out, then you can just change that really easily. But again, when you go do your listing presentation, you're not gonna give them an exact figure. You're gonna give them a range. That way they can decide, right? So me, uh, based on the comparables that I saw, the highest uh, comp, which was active, which was our, our actually smaller than us, I think was 324,000. So I would probably uh, suggest something like 328. Even though we had that closing at 339. Why? Because the closing at 339 39 had a bigger lot, had a ton more upgrades. And also being at 328, I'm still as close and as, as possible as my competition, even though they're smaller. So guess what that means? I'm gonna have more traffic than even my competition. Because who wouldn't wanna look at mine first for a $2,000 price difference uh, versus something else that's smaller? That also is a great strategy for people that have really bad um, floor plans. There's beautiful two-story floor plans with the open ceilings that most people like. And then you get those um, two-story houses with the really small eight-foot ceilings where you feel like you're literally living in an apartment. All of those things, guys, we take into consideration. And as you do more CMAs, you're gonna start learning floor plans from each of the, uh, the builders. You know, I get to a point now where, especially um, homes that were constructed between 2005 and 10, I can tell right away if it's a DR Horn or if it's a, Lennar or Richmond, and you'll get like that yourself. That's why it's important in real estate to focus in one area so you understand floor plans and all that stuff. And if you don't understand them, then you gotta do a lot of research and look, and right now with the internet and MLS, you can look at a lot of different uh, floor plans. So we're gonna go to next step and click on this. And now here's the opportunity for you actually to view it um, so that you remember exactly what you're telling them. You can PDF it, which now it's gonna do a report. It's a ton of pages uh, to print. Uh, so, you know, this is something that you do print and you insert into your uh, listing presentation or, you know, you print just the first couple of pages that go with value. If you email it, this is what it's going to look like. It's pulling up the, um, it's a pretty big report. That's why it takes a while. So this is for Joe Smith. This is the title, remember? It's done today. Map of subject and comparable properties. So it's gonna give you the ones that we chose, where your property is in uh, comparison to where they're at. And then you're gonna do, actually, you're gonna check to see the rest of the information. And when I present it to my sellers, I have this report and I face the report towards them. And I, by this time, I should have already have memorized it. And I'm prepared to tell them a story as to what I believe. So here's how I would word it. Here's your subject property, 5160 West Quail Trek Drive. 
Um, Mr. Smith, let's look first at active, uh, active listings in your area. Now, this is going to be your competition. This is what's going to take away from people looking at your house versus or their house versus yours. And really, what we focus on the most is closed sales, but of course, we've got to take into consideration who we're up against. So number one, we had chosen ours, so it does appear right here. This property right here is listed at 326000 and it looks like it did receive a contract. It did take 58 days on the market, however, so at 326000 with a smaller square footage than yours, which is 2562 square feet, I believe that the offer that came in is probably pretty close to this list price. However, I cannot uh, confirm that because, of course, I cannot call the seller and ask what kind of offer they receive. But this is getting close to where we, I believe we need to be. 5203 West Bentry, 61 days on the market. It is currently active at 320,000, 2613 square feet. The upgrades, now this will have information on upgrades all the way at the bottom, but you've already have studied this so you can tell them. The upgrades on this home are very similar to the one on yours, but it does appear that at 61 days on the market at 320,000, uh, they're, they're not uh, overpriced, but they're not underpriced either. Because the average days on the market right now are 74 with a price point like yours, I believe they're probably going to start getting some activity of some type of offer. But I would never suggest that anybody list above this price. They had to do a huge price reduction as it is already from 349 to 320 which is what I want you to avoid. Our next comparable is another active. That's the same floor plan as the other one that's active. So it's not like yours. It's 100 square feet smaller. It does look like the lot on this one though is humongous. It's 10,064 square feet. It was built a lot older than yours, 2006, um, and it's at 325. The pluses on this one are obviously the lot and the upgrades are very, very similar to yours. It's only been on the market for 27 days, which I expect that this probably will go under contract in the next you know, 30 to 60 days. The next one we wanna look at, or the next ones we wanna look at are actually sold. Now these are important because this is what an appraiser is going to heavily weigh in their decision as to how much they're going to value your home. They're not going to, even if your house is the most prettiest, the, with the best, everything, they're not going to give you, um, you know, high comps if there's no proof that, uh, proof that other properties actually sold for that amount. And a lot of it has to do with the downfall that happened in 2005, I'm sorry, 2006 and seven, when appraisers were literally uh, appraising homes 50 to $70,000 more in just 30 to 60 days. So right now, appraisers are very cautious. They're looking at every avenue, every outlet to make sure that they're pricing homes correctly because just the way I don't want to lose my license, neither do they. So let's look at these sold ones. This one will tell us a really good picture. It actually um, started being list listed at 314,000. It sold at 308,000. It's only 200 square feet smaller than yours. Upgrades are extremely similar and it still took 75 days on the market. So it, it was just, it was priced well for the for the price point, but that's why it took so long. So really, we, let's go back to your intention, seller. Do you want to sell in 30, 45, or 60 days? We have to then decide, you know, what price point we want to be at. Let's look at the next one, which will tell us even more about this phenomenon. This property sold on uh, May 18th, 2016. It lasted 333 days on the market. It doesn't have a lot more upgrade to, upgrades than yours. The square footage is very similar to yours. It is an older home, but 332 days on the market is way too long. And it does appear that um, it started at 345 and it sold at 309. I don't want you to go through a million price reductions and a year later of selling your home. So I don't, if, we, if they would have priced it at 309, they probably would have sold it in the first 30 to 45 days. More solds that I pulled for you include this one, which is a, a 3,000, I'm sorry, 2,810 square foot home. It is a different builder than yours and it is older. It was built in 2005. However, uh, at 314, it took 167,000, I'm sorry, 167 days to actually sell. It went from 325 and it finally sold at 314, indicating that it was overpriced when initially listed. The next one we're going to look at that sold is a little bit closer to what we're looking at in your area. It was built in 2011. The lot size is very, very similar. Square footage is about 200 uh, feet off from what you're at. It sold. At, it was listed at 319 and it sold at 319 with a healthy 56 days on the market. 
which is what I project for yours to be if we price it correctly. 50 to about 70 days, and, um, and that should help us get a, a full price, as long as we have a good full price comparison. Now the next one we're gonna look at, at was heavily upgraded. It's 300, it, it was listed at 339,000, it sold at 339,000, and it is a little bit bigger than yours. It sold on April 27, 2016, but as you can see, and you can actually show them on the report down here, or you can keep it open on your computer, this has a ton of upgrades. So as we go down here, you can show them all of the different reports so they can actually see, and you, have, you can have these spread out on the table, or like I said, you can go through them on there like this. So you're gonna really talk up a story, and you've already have it in your head. So based on this real report, what we're doing, then you go to the next one, which will give you just the numbers. So based on my price analysis, Mr. Seller, because your home is in great condition, it doesn't have a ton of upgrades, but it has the right upgrades. Um, it looks like it's gonna be a little bit bigger than our two, um, our two others that are competing against us, which are at 320 and 324. Though in order for us to really sell your home in an adequate amount of time, which average um, sales, I'm sorry, days on market for a sale in your price point, again, is about 60 to 75 days, we really cannot be higher, of course, than 339 because the, the appraiser is not going to give you that amount. And we really have to learn to be between this 339 price point and this 320 price point. Now, if you were to mark price your home under 320, I could probably guarantee that you're probably going to sell it within 30 days because we are the lowest priced home in the neighborhood and also the biggest. Now, if you want to test the market, I still would not suggest that you go anything above 329,000. And the reason being is because even though we did have sales perhaps a little bit higher than that, it took way too long to actually get them off the market. 167 days versus the 74 days that is, or 60 to 70 days that is healthy. So my suggestion to you, Mr. Smith, is that we price your home anywhere between 329,000 and 329,000. What are you thinking? And that's when the seller is going to tell you their number. And they're going to say, well, I was thinking 375000 Well, Mr. Seller, if you were thinking 375000 we're going to have a huge problem. Because if we put it at 375000 the appraiser is not going to, it's not going to fly. Well, I don't have a choice. I owe 375000 That's what I got to do. At that point, you as an agent is going to have to decide if you really want to take an overpriced listing. Now, let's say they say, you know what? I want to test the market. Why don't we do it at 339 since there is another sell for 339 Okay, then let me set up some realistic expectations. And there's actually a, a sheet in your listing presentation, guys, that shows what happens to traffic uh, on viewings on homes when they're priced accurately, when they're overpriced, and when they're underpriced, and how quickly they actually sell. And you should really memorize this sheet in the listing presentation that talks about that. So you want to list at 339000 Okay, I'm, I'm think, I think I wanna, I'm willing to take the risk with you. I will go ahead and do my excellent marketing, which we already talked about, because by the way, when you go to a listing presentation, you talk to them about the process, then the value, then you talk about how much they want to list it, and then how much you're going to charge them, okay? So you're still having that conversation. We'll go ahead and list it at 339000 test the market. But if I don't have five to eight showings in the first week, I already know we're overpriced. So I'm going to have a conversation with you in one week to ask you if we're ready to reduce it to where I think we need to be which is probably what this agent ended up doing because now they're at 329,000, which is very competitive to their other two. But you've got to set the expectations up front. You've got to let them know why you're choosing this range and you've got to let them know that you, they will be calling them if they're going to go ahead and not listen to you. Again, it's all about confidence. It's about doing a bunch of research. It's about creating a beautiful story that these numbers will put out to them. You have to be able to not memorize, but to practice it in your head and, and to take, you know, the consumer shoe as well as your own uh, uh, expertise. You know, is it really gonna appraise? That's the bottom line. If it's not gonna appraise, we gotta be more strategic. And then what's my competition? Who am I up against? And then how long did properties take to go pending that are currently active or are currently pending? So oh, as you can see, I tried to do the whole story to you all so you can see exactly how I would relate that to you. Let me know if you what questions I can answer for you right now.
what price point do you all think um would you tell a seller to put this home would you agree with me or what would you have said based on what i just showed you yeah just throw me a number what would you tell your seller to uh, price it at Nobody wants to take the risk. <laughs> oh, maybe you guys can't chat with me because you're watching me from YouTube. That could be it. That could be it. Well, hopefully you at least heard everything that I was saying. Okay, Myron, thank you. And Myron, you're really good with um, numbers and al analytics. So this is gonna be pretty easy for you, right? <laughs> we have a couple of, we had a couple of tricky ones. I know um, Tammy just had one that was insane. Uh, single story, you know, huge lot, upgrades galore, surrounded by smaller track homes. I mean, literally sales around there were like in the threes and we ended up coming up with the price between 600 and 630,000. So they do get trickier. I just happened to pick one that wasn't too, too bad. Um, some of them get even easier guys, cause you actually can pull comparables that, that are exact same square footage. I mean, how easy is that? Right. But in the end, I think the biggest things you, like I said, you have to focus on are upgrades. You've got to focus on location you've got to focus on uh, of course square footage and you've got to focus on the age of, uh, or the age of the home because in this particular one that we were doing we had a lot of competition from homes that were being built in 05 06 07 you know you're going to get that question a lot a seller is going to say well how much more are you going to give me because my home is newer and really in the end it goes back to uh the actual upgrades and the and the condition of the property so this makes sense hopefully guys Do we have any other questions at all? Because we're getting ready to wrap it up. That's a great question, Myron. Um, if there are no comparables within a reasonable distance to yours, Subject property, how far would you search? I've done acre homes, um, I spent a mil million dollar listings, things of that nature. I've had to go out sometimes even five miles, um, even 10 sometimes. I've gotten to the point where if I cannot find comparables on the MLS, I have to go find them in my tax information right here. Because it actually gives you uh, information of any sales up in this area right here that did not happen in the MLS. So um, it gets really difficult uh, to, to do the higher end ones. There's no rule as far as the actual, um, the actual location, but I would go as far out as, as soon as, as long as I can get at least six different comparables. You know, one other thing that helps and the reason why I was able to go through this very quickly is because I have an understanding of things like it's a buyer's market versus a seller's market. You know, we know uh, that under, you know, 400,000, it's considered right now a seller's market. So what that means is that the sellers have the luxury to price their homes uh, on the up side versus, you know, having to necessarily give them away. Now, when you go anything above 400,000, you're talking about a buyer's market. So the buyers have so much inventory to choose from that you have to be really strategic in pricing your home. This one at 329, you can take a small risk and say, hey, let me price it at the at, as high as I can get. But if you were talking about a property at 600,000, I wouldn't take that risk because my competition is way too fierce. So it really depends on the property, it depends on the location, and it depends on the type of market and price point that we're dealing with. And all of this stuff, guys, you're gonna get better and better at. Um, you, you're only gonna get better once you do transactions and do CMAs like crazy. If you're already focusing in a market area, like a niche or a farm, you should be pulling properties like this and doing CMAs already. 
uh, for a couple of reasons. First, you're getting familiar with inventory, you're getting familiar with floor plans, and you're getting familiar with actually coming up with pricing. And this should be your homework. So tomorrow, all of you pick one property that you're doing, uh, do a report on it, and email it to me. And I will critique it, and I will give you my opinion so that uh, you get better and better so that when you do have to stand in front of that seller, you know, you can actually uh, present it well. Now, I'll critique it, you can email it to me, and then we can Skype or we can do an in-person meeting so you can uh, do it in front of me or again we can hook you up with one of our mentors at the office or even our mastermind one of our mastermind uh, team members that can help you uh, do this with the mentors another opportunity you get guys is you get to uh, if you do get a mentor at the office if you're interested in that then you actually get to go to a listing appointment with them so you can see them happen the biggest thing is confidence and doing it's not even how many years you have experience it's doing the homework up front so that when you go deliver this it, it sounds educated sounds well planned out and it sounds confident that's key all right good questions myron any other questions guys all right it looks like we're going to end three minutes early well thank you guys for joining tonight um please stay on the schedule every web every wednesday 6 30 p.m we're going to have um a webinar we're only skipping next Wednesday. So we'll have four of the month of August and just next Wednesday, um, just because I'm going to be out of the office that weekend or that day. And we also have a remodel happening at our office. You're free to come in and out, but it's going to smell like paint and there's going to be carpet and there's going to be uh, carpet being thrown around and people doing a lot of funky stuff. So feel free to come in if you need to do scanners or computers. Um, feel free to call me, text me, email me if you have any additional questions. Thank you guys for investing in your professional development. You don't know how important this is as far as your job goes. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your evening. I'll see you all soon here. Have a great evening.